Now I get to do something fun for you today. I'm gonna to tie another fly sent in by a viewer. This one comes to us from James Seitzema of Illinois. James says he's fished the Kishwaukee River for over 40 years. Now if this place doesn't look like prime smallmouth water, I don't know what does. Now I don't know if it's always this color, but I gather it's always got a bit of this tinge to it because he calls this pattern I'm about to tie the Kishwaukee Bourbon. Now that is a great name for a fly. And it's done well for him as a smallmouth fly, but he does tie it on a salmon hook, so I could see this thing working well for steelhead or salmon as well. Now it's a pretty simple tie, not a whole lot of materials. Got some duck or goose flank feather for a tail, then some rabbit, fuzzy rabbit dubbing for a body, and then you got some bear, or you could probably substitute skunk or bucktail for the, the wing, and then just some barred ginger for a front collar hackle. So James, thank you for sending me this pattern. This looks like a beautiful river that you call home. And if anybody else has any original patterns you'd like to see me tie for the channel, please send them my way. I'll put my email address in the description here. And who knows, maybe someday this channel will blow up and I'll make your pattern famous. Probably not, but you know, maybe I can put it in my first book. So there it is in the vise, James Seitzma's Kishwaukee Bourbon. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. Now, he ties this on a salmon hook. This is a size six, three extra long, and a single salmon hook. Let's pinch this barb right here. Now, he uses it for smallmouth. I should have said that in the intro, but it's nothing to say this thing wouldn't be a great steelhead or salmon wet fly here. Let's catch our thread in right behind that bend. See that little bend right there? I should have stepped my thread up, but we'll be fine with this 70 denier. A thicker thread would have helped us fill that gap in just a little bit better. Now for the tail, James used a goose flank feather, body feather. I didn't have goose, so I'm gonna use this duck right here, this mallard flank. And ducks and geese, yeah, they're pretty similar. So I pulled that little tuft off and I'll just kind of roll it spin it right here just make sure none of these feathers stay married let's tie in a pretty long tail right here i think that's going to work okay now we do have a fuzzy body so you can just bury these you could snip them if you want but go ahead and leave your thread anywhere in the middle or toward the front and let's catch in the medium holographic tinsel in gold now, if you don't have a holographic, you know what I always say, just use what you got. Regular tinsel, I'm sure, would be just fine right here. So let's catch it into the back where we're going to start our dubbed body. And I hope I showed you that pelt in the intro. What I do with it, I just take this dubbing rake right here and then pull out a bunch of rabbit. I got a big clump right here. This would be enough for a couple of flies. I'm going to put some wax on and then just dub it pretty thick. It's probably going to take me a couple applications to get all the way up there. But we do want a pretty thick and fuzzy body. And let's go just a little bit more than this. And don't worry if you think you got it too fuzzy. In fact, I would rather air to have it at too fuzzy. You can always, you know, snip some off. But if it's not fuzzy enough, you can take your dubbing brush and pull some out. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap this, several wraps, pretty much, I'm just gonna wrap it the same way I wrapped this dubbing. Now we should have enough bulk up there that we're closing that gap behind that bend in the hook, but just put a few extra wraps right here to kind of build it up if you'd like.
And the wing on James's fly, just a small to medium tuft of black bear hair. If you don't have black bear, um, skunk would be my next choice. If you don't have that, just use some bucktail. And if I was using bucktail, I would definitely put it in my stacker. This bear, I don't necessarily need to stack. I'm spinning my thread clockwise here to get a cord on it. That way I can get a pretty tight bite right here. There we go. And just down to the bend of the hook, as long as the bend of the hook. Let's snip this front off right here. And a few extra wraps, just clean this little area up. And a collar hackle, just some bar ginger. And the good thing about this, this is a dry fly hackle from a cape, but you can take the big feathers on the underside toward the back of the cape, the kind you really don't use for dry flies. They make nice sweat back wings. And I got a little nick in my thread there, but we'll put a few extra wraps and work through this. And I use that stem right there to further help smooth out that little lump right there. I got a few hairs, I think, going forward. Maybe that's from that hackle, but either way, we're gonna be fine. Now just wrap this up and sweep them back as you wrap it. Some big, long, sweat back fibers here. And you can, you know, up to you, I think, how many you put down. I think four wraps is probably gonna be plenty. Let's back this up just a little bit and catch it off right here. We'll sweep them back when we work on our head in just a second. Do the old trick, lick my fingers and kind of pull everything back right here and then just ramp a big head back. And this is where I would have been better off using a 140 denier thread. Wouldn't take near as many wraps. But thread is pretty cheap, so we got away with using the 70 denier here. Let's go ahead and whip finish it toward the back of the head. And take a look, do we have any cleanup? I got a few of these hackle barbs going all over the place, but nah, this is a fuzzy fly. I'm not gonna clean it up. I'm putting a drop of head cement on it, calling this thing done. So there you go, folks. James Seitzma's Kishwaukee Bourbon. I certainly appreciate him sending me this pattern. It's a pretty fun one to tie, and I appreciate y'all watching. Take care, and we'll see you next time.